We're uh, members of the Composers Collective from Iceland, uh, Slaughter, and um, we're gonna discuss a tiny bit about instruments, musical instruments that has been a topic uh, with in the bubble of, of Slaughter, and uh, many instruments, music instruments, ha have been made uh, on occasions for either a long-term project developing a musical instrument uh, for uh, uh, for a kind of future repertoire or maybe uh, building a, a specific instrument for a specific occasion and in some part uh, really like ephemeral instruments that kind of degrade after a short time and uh, there's I think there's a lot of lost instruments uh, within the archive of Slaughter and <laughs> um, I've, I've been involved in this development of uh, an instrument called Thraunabom which is a uh, feedback instrument, uh, audio feedback, which uses, um, in the latest version, uses a tuba as a resonating cavity. So uh, the resonance frequencies of the tuba define how the feedback will come out of it. title is kind of stolen from a, a, another visual artist, Halldór Ulvarsson, which did this uh, similar instrument uh, for a cello. So he put a feedback through uh, actually strings on a cello. So he used pickups and, and a loudspeaker. And that project is has been going on for 10 years or so. And, and he has been working closely with members of the Slaughter Collective. and. Um, yeah, and uh, and in some occasions, making an instrument is doesn't have to be all about uh, trying to make a new sound or certain things like uh, or uh, it can be modulating a performance practice on an instrument, uh, kind of limiting the performer in doing something, or or trying to make new something things. Uh, I've been collaborating with a uh, Icelandic. Uh, German uh, designers that actually made this instrument called a circle flute, which is actually a combination of four flutes in a, a, yeah, a circle, which is two and a half meter in diameter. And, and uh, what surprised me a lot when working with that instrument was that it actually became its own uh, entity. It, it really affected the performance uh, affected how the performers relate to each other even though it's normal sounding flute uh, like for normal sound sounding flute the connection of the flute and how it can changes the concert setting really affects how you can now approach the instrument
So instruments can be used in a lot of different ways and, and uh, not, not only about making new sounds. I, I would maybe say uh, that instruments <coughs> are not necessarily just musical sounding instruments. As you, as, uh, as you mentioned, and instruments are also uh, just tools uh, for, for musical practice. And, uh, and, uh, and the tool influences very much the musical language that comes out. So, so a very in, in, uh, interesting way to compose is to compose uh, the instrument and, and to, to have it so that the instrument uh, makes the performer uh, play a certain type of music. And uh, uh, I, I can name an example of a, of a, a Slaughter project that we did in Bergen. Uh, then in that case we did, there were three composers working together and we did not uh, compose any notes. <coughs> we also did not compose any specific instruments, but we decided to, to compose uh, costumes for the performers. And the costumes were made out of a sponge material that was really big, in some cases much bigger than the performers. And they were, they were, were wearing these uh, strange big geometrical shapes, which limited their performance uh, very much. They also just limited their their, uh, their ability to move around or go through doors or sit down, they could not sit down. They, they, they would need help for almost anything and, um, and including uh, performing music. So one of them might have, have like one hand over here and the other one here. So you could not play a guitar except like a one-handed guitar in collaboration with someone else. So, so composing is, is not just about uh, the, the, the sounds, it's not just about the notes, it's not just about uh, <coughs> the, the notation, it's also about the, the situation that you put people in and, and the, how to influence uh, people. And, and uh, musical instruments is a, is a very limiting factor. Uh, we can see it as that. It can also, you know, normally instruments have a certain range, they have a certain uh, space that they function in. So, so composing or, or um, designing instruments, it's about uh, limiting things or specifying things or doing something that is um, yeah, particular for, for or very good at, at one certain thing and not necessarily others. Um, but if I, if, if I show you some examples, maybe of, of things uh, we have done, then I could name uh, something like the aluminium drum, which is this one here, um, which is a, a drum that uh, includes electronic motors. So each time you touch the drum, then the motors uh, get contact with the ground and start to move. So, so uh, it's a kind of like a drum rolling automatic uh, drum. Uh, other instruments I can name also the, the Slaughter uh, trumpet, which is a, a version of a, a trumpet using a foot that actually is the same name as the Composer Collective, Slaughter is a form of uh, blood uh, haggis. Uh, others like these here are, are instruments that, that are automatic beaters, like robotic controllers, basically, for uh, any acoustic instrument. So, you, so an instrument uh, on its own does not have to have a certain sound. An instrument can be um, uh, just focusing on the interface between a human and, uh, and the machine. As we think about like a, a, a church organ, then, then it looks very much like a piano but, or a, a, a keyboard of the piano is the same. So uh, the same person that knows how it works can move from one to the other, use the same interface and the resulting sound is something completely different. So we have these different stages of instrument, like the, the interface, 
and then you have something like a sound generator and you have something uh, which we can call an amplifier and then the, the sound uh, resonator or cavity or, or uh, uh, an actuator. So, so there is an instrument is not one thing, it's a lot of things and making an instrument can, can also include uh, uh, yeah, something that is uh, from, uh, like a complete instrument or partial. You can also design instruments that fit into other instruments, etc. Everything is possible. I think the idea of limitation is very important, both in notation and instrument building. That like, mm -hmm. for instance, a rope can be both a notation and an instrument. I once did a piece where I just had uh, string players play whatever. So they basically were um, unlimited. And uh, then gradually I just started tying them up and restricting their movements, making them stuck to the fretboard in certain places, making smaller movements, restricting their dynamics and range, and then eventually trying to make them completely stop. So I think it blurs the line between notation and instrument. Yeah, so part of our praxis is also uh, oftentimes using found instruments. Uh, and uh, we spend a lot of time going to uh, the second-hand shops and going to the recycling place and um, uh, scouting for material. It's something that we might have in common with a lot of percussion players, actually, because it's sort of the same kind of kind of feel that that or the same kind of mindset that that everything can be uh, a musical instrument. It's very present uh, in that culture, but. Uh, but also recycling, I have a piece, uh, we touched a little bit on it, a piece for plastic bottles. So it's like the idea of, of uh, a piece that can be uh, placed, placed, played uh, like almost anywhere in at least, uh, I think, anywhere where I've been in the Western world, uh, because there's abundance of, of uh, plastic bottles from soft drinks and, and all this kind of stuff. So you can just find the instruments like anywhere and you can perform this piece. So you don't need to, to, uh, to do much effort to, to, to do this. It's something that anybody can do and, and um, there's a great availability of it. But it also like kind of shifts the focus on, on recycling, looking at, at something that is something we just throw away normally and just discard as trash and instead looking at it as, as uh, a musical instrument that can actually have some beauty to it. We've also done a lot of things with just random objects. As I said, we go to the recycling place a lot and uh, just find random things and tape together. And uh, then when we're done, we take it apart and put it back in the recycling. So, uh, so yeah, so it's, it's part of of uh, of the praxis that mm -hmm. we're working on, on these kind of more, uh, what should we say, um, instruments that are not uh, meant to to last for a long time, but can be reconstructed and reconfigured in in any number of ways, uh, depending on the situation we play. But I would say also uh, with that that uh, classical instruments or standard. Uh, at least Western instruments are also found objects. They are they are uh, something that normally the person that is playing the instrument did not build. Uh, this is something that you go and buy into in the shop. Mm -hmm. Same as with uh, you know all kinds of uh, stuff that you buy. Uh, so so there's um, um, how to say there are, uh, certain. Um, uh, certain certain thing that comes with the, the instrument, of course, like there's a culture around playing the instruments, but other found objects like uh, you know bottles or cans are are uh, do do not include a certain performance practice, so you so they are in many ways more open than the standardized uh, instruments that you have. Um, 
but then then of course uh, when you make your own instruments then often you it also comes with uh, instructions somehow of how to play it or at least some kind of idea because an instrument on its own normally doesn't make any sounds so you have to have to yeah uh, uh, that's a, another kind of p aspect of designing an instrument is just how are you going to use it what are you going to do with it I would say that's even uh, more important somehow than the than actually the instrument itself somehow. but it's also often about discovering mm -hmm. the potential of uh, what you can do with a certain thing like oh here's a stick what, what can I what can I do with this? I can rub them together. I can mm -hmm. experiment. So a lot of the compositional practice, at least for me, is is about these kind of things, going and discovering uh, something and discovering some potential uh, with something that you normally maybe just think is uh, some inanimate object that is not good for anything and just in the way or something. Yeah. <coughs> and it's kind of good to reflect on that, that certain instruments, they kind of <coughs> are kind of invite you to approach it in certain ways. And, uh, and I really enjoy yeah. collaborating with performers and diving into the like the kind of, let's say, the older performance practice, like from the Baroque period. And because there, all of a sudden, you when you start to hear that music on the original instruments, and maybe with certain articulations that were maybe people found out that were really common at the time, mm -hmm. the music sometimes starts to make sense. So it's like this relationship between the instrument and the music is sometimes so integrated that, uh, and, and it sometimes gets just lost in translations, even though it's the same instrument that we tend to say the same, but they have maybe slightly changed through time, like uh, let's say the grand piano, going from the forte piano to grand piano, with the different tunings, and all, uh, like the music really changes and um, so I, I guess the whole kind of diving into the instruments has led to this that you actually actually discover that they are so influential on, on you that the, actually the music is really just deriving from those instruments. <laughs> 